The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 06 a.m. Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and a pretty calm market to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P flat right now, trading at 45.11 within about 1% of all time highs. Quite the acceleration we've had for October. It's October 20th right now. NASDAQ 100 in the positive by 11 points this morning, 15,410. We get the Dow negative by 19 points. 35,303 in the Russell, negative by just one this morning. We jumped to Bitcoin. Bitcoin pushing right near. Did that get 65,000 on the dot? How about it? Is that uh, 60? We're 500 bucks away from the all time high. That's right. 65,520. Quite a day for Bitcoin yesterday with the ETF going public. We'll get into that in a little bit of, uh, in a moment in terms of the type of volume that they did. Quite a day yesterday for the ProShares Bitcoin ETF's debut. Crude oil. Down a buck 11, 81.33. Taking a look at the 15 minute, a little bit of a pullback and some volatility yesterday in crude. We get to a high yesterday. Did we miss it by a penny? I think, yeah, 82.99. The print, that's it. And then 82.98 on the next bar, almost right at 83 bucks. We've given up some of those gains this morning. Uh, we usually talk to Teddy Kegstad of Forex Trading Unlock.com Wednesdays at 40 past. He's got an obligation. We're going to miss him this week. He's been calling for higher crude recently. Uh, we'll look to him next Wednesday as we talk Forex and commodities, but crude. Talk about finding a bid consistently, taking a look at the daily on crude. Uh, let's take off some of these just for some clarity on this chart. And you see the run recently. It has been a straight shot, folks. August 23rd from $62 up $20 in less than two months. Talking about quite an acceleration, barely a pullback throughout that too. Quite a defined channel line in crude. We jump to gold. Gold catching a bid this morning up $15. We're back to a 15 minute chart. Gold up to almost $17.90. We're trading at $17.85. You see the run beginning at about $8.30 last night. We jumped to silver. Silver's up 27 cents this morning, $24.15. And we jumped to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of a reversal from where we were overnight. We're talking about a yield right now of 1.63%. Price-wise, we're positive by three ticks at 130.21 in the 10-year. We got to jump over to the volatility index. Talk about sucking out all the volatility. Will we get a 14 handle as we come into the heat of earnings season? Not what you expected, right? I mean, you take a look at the daily. All the talk was we come through September on a pullback. We're coming into earnings season. We're going to have a lot of themes in this earnings season. Which one dominates? We're going to find out over the next few weeks. Uh, but the themes that are playing out, you're talking about wages. You're talking about supply ch chain constraints. Uh, you're talking about inflationary tendencies. Maybe you have to raise prices, et cetera. We had Procter & Gamble out with their numbers yesterday. Uh, quite a drop off. You did claw back some of the losses that you had early in the day from 138 up to almost 141. But Procter & Gamble dealing with some inflationary pressures for the inputs that they use. They're going to be raising prices on a lot of the household items that you see at the supermarket uh, and in the retail stores. OK, jumping around to what we got going on. We got to talk about Netflix. Netflix out with their numbers last night. Pretty strong numbers. Quite the volatile volatility in the 15 minutes that started. Check out this action, right? You dive down to 622 initially. You spike up to 663. And then overnight, you settle between about 620 and 630. Now, on a minute basis, so we're going to make it all the way back. Yes, you are. Uh, just to focus on where the earnings were. I mean, you can see we were up here. We were down to 622. I remember this happening because they come out right after the close so literally four o'clock p.m and one second they come out with their numbers you dive to six uh 622 you spike to 633 and all things considered within about 13 dollars of where we closed yesterday i think the expected move was about 32 dollars in this equity not a big move of 13 bucks when you look at the volatility that we've had recently you take a look at the daily we were just trading in august at 507 so if you complete the earnings uh statement and you stay above 625 i'm sure that's pretty well considering the expectations netflix came into so let's get into the netflix numbers why not 
Netflix. I got a few articles pulled up here. Uh, they're going to start to release more viewership data on their shows. That's one thing they're going to be talking about. Uh, they're going to talk about total hours is what they say in here. Uh, later this year, the company is going to be re begin reporting the hours viewed for programs. Up to now, it's been reporting the number of accounts that watch a program for two minutes or more. Talk about leaving room. Um in the data in terms of holes in the data when you only know how many people watch it for two minutes when you have shows i mean how many people complete it right how many people watch an entirety of a season etc i think it was something like 75 or 85 million people finished squid game which is pretty remarkable uh across the board i think they had 144 million that ended up watching it so this is an opinion piece just talking about that the the benefits of which Netflix out here is doing so they reported 4.38 million net new members for the third quarter a big boost Kevin Hanks we'll talk to him after the next break uh, talking about international growth for Netflix a big boost coming from Asia Pacific region as the US and Canada return to growth but even those results didn't fully reflect reflect the swim squid game phenomenon of the last few weeks uh, so some of the numbers here in terms of what they'll be adding where are we Oh, maybe this was the one we want. Here we go. So next quarter, okay, so they had 4.3 million, 4.38 million subscribers they had in the third quarter. Projections were 3.72, so that's a beat. They expect to sign up 8.5 million customers in the final three months of 2021. The summer months, usually a slow period for signing people up. You're probably outside, you're heading to the beach, you're doing whatever you're doing in the summer, enjoying summer vacation with the kids maybe, so you're not signing up for shows. Comes time for winter, you hunker down in some of the colder states in the Northeast and Northwest, uh, and you sign up for a streaming service or maybe just even internationally during that period of time. 8.32 million. Uh, and they got a bunch of shows coming up. That's what they're talking about. You look at it on the chart, big expectations. 142 million, there you go, households started watching Squid Game. That's staggering when you think that they finished the quarter with 213.6 million subscribers. Two out of three people subscribe to Netflix, and man, Netflix got a lot of people. I feel like everybody I know is subscribed to Netflix, and then when you think everybody you know is subscribed to Netflix and two out of three people are watching Squid Game, that's a lot of people. Uh, nonetheless, they beat. Now, when you talk about getting into uh, next year, guidance pretty pretty close to expectations, if not a small miss in terms of where they'll be. So the market a little bit tame on that, down about 14 bucks. It will be interesting to see when Netflix opens uh, this morning on their volatility, especially with what we did last night. Uh, conference call beginning at about six o'clock. Things calm down a bit, and we settle at about 626, down about 13 bucks on their numbers. What else we got going on? We'll talk a little bit more about Netflix as they open up. Uh, yield. So that was the article I had up here. 1.67% was the number we had. Now, the 10-year, we've had it rise a bit in price. Let me get that 10-year up. We've had it rise a bit in price. So you were talking about a 1.67% yield last night. We were almost climbing to 1.7%, right? You take a look at this thing on a daily, you're now decently below the lows that we had back in April, which is remarkable. We talked to Kevin Hanks yesterday. He was talking about market very comfortable right now with 1.6%. We might be at 1.65, 1.7 by the time he comes on the program, folks, coming up after this break. I kid, but man, look at this move, right? You're talking about now below where we were in March and April, the weeks there. Uh, that is also kind of going below the area that was an area of resistance back here in September of 2019. Now below that area, maybe the next stop's about 127.29. You're talking about almost three full points where we're at right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Kevin Hanks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back right now, folks. We got the S&Ps up two points. We got about 12 minutes to go until the start of trading right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. Folks, every trading day, noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. You can check out Kevin, Tom White, talking about fast market, talking about defined risk trading, option season. We have earnings season, I should say, uh, in full swing. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Do we have him? Maybe? I can't hear him. Do I have him? All right, we'll have to see if we can get back on. Unfortunately, I'm not hearing him right now. Uh, s and is up by two points right now, folks. Jumping back to those Netflix numbers from last night uh, before we jump forward. Earnings, 319 versus 256. Revenue, you see pretty much in line. Subscribers, we talked about 4.4 .4 million versus 3.84. And we talked about they're gonna add 8.5 million subscribers in the fourth quarter. Scrolling down, I wanted to get the yearly numbers because it was a little bit of a miss when they talk about fiscal year. But nonetheless, pretty strong numbers. They'll open up in about 10 minutes from where we are now. Uh, what else we got going on? Talking about supply chain. Article out here on CNBC. Panic ordering by retailers is making the supply chain crisis even worse. And before we jump into that one, I think we got our man Kevin Hinks back on the line. Kevin, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I'm here, buddy. <laughs> All right, I got you. Perfect. Thank goodness. Uh, Kevin, we got Netflix out last night. Pretty uh, tame yep. move, about $13. They had some volatility out of, out of the gate last night uh, in both directions, but about a $13 move. Pretty good. We got the S&P and I believe the NASDAQ five days in a row that were in positive territory right near record highs. What are you looking at in this market this morning, Kevin? You know, I think, Tommy, uh, the Netflix news was about as good as we thought it would be. Even though the stock's down slightly, I think there was probably no number that was going to make that market go up. And they did guide to slightly um, less numbers for next quarter in some of the revenue numbers. So a uh, slight back off here in Netflix, boy, wouldn't scare me if I was uh, one of their stockholders. They, they're still doing an unbelievable job. But today, obviously today, we, we've got Tesla. We've got IBM. We've got um, some good names coming out before the open tomorrow morning. Southwest Airlines will trade all of those today on fast market. So 
you know, uh, ju- just in case you were worried, Tommy, the pace is doing nothing but go- but going higher here. It's pretty cool, man. Um, you know, it's it's there's almost so much happening. I, I almost forgot about Tesla for a moment. Shame on me, man. Uh, Tesla, quite the run this had up. And you make a great point, Kevin. I kicked off the program saying, man, if you're in Netflix shares, right, and you were just in it at 507 August 12th, you got to be happy that you're going to make it through earnings at a price of about 625. We'll see how they open. But that's decent action, man, when you were just trading at 500 and change about two months ago. Uh, Tesla, yeah, exactly. pretty similar you're, you're, action. You're, if you're, if you're trading, te- if, you're, if you're long Netflix, you're doing pretty well over the last oh, 60 right. days. I would be, yeah, enjoying, enjoying. I, that's why I say almost making it through earnings after you get a run up over the last two months. Uh, Tesla, pretty similar action in terms of the run up. This run has been going on since May, where this thing was at 546. You're coming into earnings at 865 within 35 bucks of all time highs. Now, interesting, Kevin, I'm on the Analyze tab. About a $31 move priced into Tesla, $864 stock. Uh, I think that was about the similar move almost to Netflix yesterday, which had, I think it was, now I pulled it up actually, which is great because it's still there because the option market has an open $34 move. What do you make of a company like Tesla actually having less of a move priced into it than a company like Netflix? Uh, both obviously some volatility, but Tesla usually has been pretty volatile. I was surprised to see that this morning, a little bit of a less of a move priced into their numbers coming out. Well, you, you have to take the percentage, right, and look at it like in terms of that. So I've got sure. the Tesla move, you know, pretty close to 4%, just under 4%, Tommy. And that is in the range, right, of, of names. And that number can move. It'll move. It, it can probably move during the day today as spe- speculation picks up. So there's lots of things that can still happen. But a 4% move, is it high, is it low? It's in a range, Tommy. Remember, that's not the answer to the question about the expected move after earnings. That, that one-day market maker move is part of the question. All that does is reflect the implied volatility in that, in that event week. So we'll see what Tesla moves after the earnings event. That's where the real answer lies, Tommy. And talk about movement, man. I got to ask you a little bit about Bitcoin. Quite the run up. I'm not sure what you're willing to uh, even able to talk about in terms of uh, Bitcoin and the ETF. But pretty remarkable day yesterday where we got an ETF and Bitcoin coming down the line. And you're talking about record highs near 65,000 this morning. What's your what's your take on what they have going on in Bitcoin and the new ETF now? And we have ETFs trading our futures in Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is a big, maybe the biggest momentum trade that we have and i personally stay away from bitcoin because i they don't really have a way to derive its value and even this etf doesn't flow into the actual coin it just flows into the future so i i'm still struggling with value on bitcoin but i i'm a trader i notice as it continues to get accepted momentum is carrying this name I'm just worried about when the momentum stops, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, we say it's it's great points, and nobody knows where where the end is going to run for Bitcoin, whether it's at zero dollars or a million dollars a coin. And and crazy enough, I'm not exaggerating, man, that it could get there eventually if that's where the future goes. Uh, but we are coming in at record highs. Last time we were at record highs, you had the Coinbase IPO, uh, and then we traded down to thirty thousand. We have an ETF launch, and like you say, it's traded off the futures. Very important fact, folks. We found out how that can matter last year when you had the oil futures. Um, trading. You have USO trading off the oil futures. That contributed. It is interesting, Kevin. I heard some analysis out there, too, saying usually futures contracts come with, of course, whether you're talking about commodities, maybe there's people in there that are looking for actual physical delivery versus price exposure that some people are looking for. And when it comes to Bitcoin, the people in futures are really just looking for price exposure because, like you say, there's no underlying value that you can actually contrive beyond what somebody's willing to pay for it. And the ETF does the same thing, which is a little different because most times, like the, the oil fund is what I'm equating it to, the ETF is the price exposure vehicle. But in futures, you do have some demand for physical. Uh, maybe you have the ETF taken away from some, from some of the demand in the futures contract. Maybe you have the futures contract taken away some of the demand in ETF. Uh, interesting, we come in at 65,000. I think we're gonna get options on that as well. Is that right? I mean, which is just craziness, I think, in terms of throwing fuel on a little bit of fire. 
Uh, okay, Kevin. Well, listen, we appreciate the update, man. We look forward to the conversation at noon today. Tesla coming out with their numbers, and uh, we appreciate the conversation and education as always, Kevin. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for the update, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every day, 12 noon Eastern time. Tesla should be a good one. Uh, and I was just a little bit surprised myself to see, percentage-wise, Tesla uh, less volatility priced into it than Netflix. Now, Netflix has had some volatile numbers. They've had, missed on earnings a little bit. Uh, but Tesla, man, they've always had some volatility. And when you're coming into earnings at almost record high of 900 bucks, and they have a $30 move, basically. Now, as Kevin said, that will move throughout the day, folks. As the options get priced, that will recalibrate at 9.30 when the options market opens. Uh, and then you can see where you are in terms of the implied volatility. Now, that is for the move through today, okay? The weekly is talking about $45 move. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll see how the market opens, and we'll be right back in three minutes, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find a newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets positive and we got the markets in the green right now. SP is up five points at 45.16. NASDAQ 100 up 25 points. Let's jump over to Netflix and see how they open the trading day. Netflix right now a little bit lower, 624 right now. You're down 2.2%. Let's see how Tesla's opening up ahead of their earnings. Tesla flat at 864 right now. We'll jump around to some of the FANG stocks. 
Amazon shares up half a percent, we'll call it, at 34.59. Microsoft shares up three tenths percent at 309. Apple shares up two tenths at 149. Google shares right now flat at 28.75. And we jump to Facebook. Facebook, man, it is relentless, up eight tenths percent. You take a look at Facebook. Uh, quite a rebound from where we were on October 12th. You're talking about $25 from 317. We're back to 342 right now. Still well off the highs of 384. Uh, Facebook shares, looks like they're going to try a little rebranding. Uh, maybe in the route of Google had gone. The Meta, the Horizon, Facebook renaming report sparks speculation. So it seems like they're going to go the Google slash Alphabet route, where they're going to have a parent company with a different name, Facebook. Uh, will be one of the many brands that they have underneath that name as they try and expand those brands, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, looks like that's out there. Nonetheless, that's basically the whole entirety of it. Uh, Meta.com address appears connected to CEO Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, we'll see where that goes. But uh, probably a whole lot of nothing trying to dust off the bad press that Facebook has probably gotten. I imagine they would love to get a new name, something like Alphabet that Google has experienced in a big way. Jumping around to a couple others. Now, Bitcoin, we talked about it. Let's just talk about some of the numbers real quickly. Bitcoin futures ETF debuts as second highest traded fund ever. More than 24 million shares changed hands on the first day. Climbs within striking distance of the April's record high. We'll jump back in a moment. That's 65,500 about. We're trading at 65,000 about this morning. Uh, it was up 4.9%, more than 24 million shares traded hands Tuesday. I think they ended with assets of about $570 million after day one in terms of the fund. That is with a fee of about 1%, 0.95%. Gotta love how funds price it like a bag of potato chips, 99 cents. What's the, what's the fee? It's not 1%, it's 0.95%. It's 95 cents, it's not a dollar, it's 95 cents. Pricing is everything sometimes. Uh, nonetheless, that's still quite a number when you're talking about $570 million after day one. Uh, retail investors rushed to buy the ETF Tuesday, one of the most bought assets on Fidelity's platform, more than 8,800 buy orders coming from customers as of about 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and the first one to go public, as they say there. Yeah, so interesting to see how, I was wondering to see if they had the 570 million. They don't have it in this article. I was reading about it last night uh, in an article talking about $570 million is what they end up assets after day one. And let's jump over and see how it's trading. BITO is their symbol. You're up about two thirds percent. We'll put it on a five minute. There's your volatility out of the gate yesterday. And we're actually at basically highs right now, 42.19. That's probably going to mean Bitcoin's right near highs right now of 65,000, 64,950. We'll jump over to Ethereum real quick. Ethereum following the line, almost at 4,000. We're at 39.72 right now in Ethereum. Okay, what else we have up here in terms of stocks uh, that are moving today? We talked about Netflix. Anthem is out with their numbers. Profit of 679, 637 was the consensus estimate, raising the full year. Outlook amid higher premiums for its Medicare and Medicaid business. It's always a good business to be sending bills to the government to get paid. A-N-T-M, and I don't kid, uh, up 4.6% for Anthem. You take a look at the daily, and you're talking above anything we've been at recently. And Anthem's been in a consolidation for the better part of really April from 360 to 400, chopping around. We're well above that now. And you put this thing back on a five-year weekly, you see quite a trend that we've had on this thing, man. Yeah, the consolidation, excuse me, between 250 and 300 for a while breaks out of that in a big way in February, and you're pushing all-time highs right now. I think all-time highs, right? There you go. Quite a trend uh, for Anthem. Higher Medicare and Medicaid. I'm sure that investors love to hear that. Biogen is out with their numbers. They beat on the top and bottom lines. They earned 477. Market was looking for 411. They're still optimistic about the prospects for its Alzheimer's drug, Adulam. Adulam? Uh, despite slower than expected adoption. Now, this is the one that had all the controversy about. You're up 2.6% today. You put it on the daily. There's where they receive approval. Uh, remarkable that you give up all of the approval. Uh, you had people on the panels quitting, right, though, saying that basically they didn't agree with the process. It shouldn't have been approved. You have people that, of course, want some drug that hasn't been approved for Alzheimer's in decades to give you a chance. Understandable there. Uh, remarkable that we're literally back to the price that we were at before you had that huge explosion up to 468. This morning, you're up 1.7% on their numbers. 
Yeah, Novavax down big in the pre-market following a political report saying it was having trouble meeting the FDA quality standards for its COVID vaccine. Not what you want to hear. Um, not sure what's going on there, but Novavax down 17% today. You're talking about trading right into the lows of May, which we're back to the lows of February on this equity. Watch out for that one. Verizon uh, with their numbers beat, beat estimates by five cents, a buck 41. Revenue slightly below forecast. Revenue uh, Verizon increased, though, the full year guidance. 5G adoption boosts sales. 5G is the future, folks. Uh, future of things. Rising up 1.4% today. This thing's been on a pullback. It's been a flat year, basically, um, for a while. I mean, not even a flat year, right? What did you come into the year at? About 59. You're at, yeah, you were coming in at 51. Now, it's a strong dividend stock. My mom worked for Verizon. Full disclosure, she's got some Verizon in her um, retirement account. Now, if you want to take a look at this thing, right, you take a look at this thing on a monthly. That might have been the bounce there. I mean, you look where we've been, right? I had these channels on here going back to, when is this? Yeah, look at this. So I haven't even looked at this since January when this was back there. You were right in the middle of those channel lines. All right, you're going to extend this to the right. And look at that. That is a nice bounce to the bottom of that channel line. You're looking to get into Verizon. And again, I know I'm biased. I have some exposure to it through my mom having it. But uh, that's a nice channel line. Not quite parallel lines, but pretty well defined on the bottom and the top. And we're talking about right near the bottom line of that Verizon. Been lagging in a big way, but a nice dividend stock to have in there as part of your retirement. That's my take on things. Jumping back to Netflix. They're talking about Netflix and the Tigers Den. Giving up some of the gains. Netflix down 3.1% today. There's your drop to 618. Now, we put up the three-year weekly, though. Man, quite the run. You had a consolidation for the better part of almost 12, 13 months. Uh, yeah, 12, 13 months. We break out of it as you run from August and all things considered, as we said, you're talking about within 26 bucks of all time highs. They make it through their earnings season. And this was the slower season, as in they only were supposed to add 3.8 million subscribers. They add 4 million plus the expectations for next quarter, 8 million or so. Uh, Netflix charges on and they got what was it? They got Seinfeld in the library going on right now. Along with Squid Game, et cetera, and of course, uh, all the other usual titles. I think I saw a notification for Ozark coming out the final season. If you haven't checked out Ozark and you do have a Netflix subscription, check it out. That is a good one uh, for sure. Okay, what else we got going down? United's out with their numbers. They lost a dollar o to a share. The market was looking for a loss of buck sixty seven though. Spread of COVID Delta variant has slowed but not derailed its recovery. United was higher in the pre-market. Let's see how they're trading on the open. Not so fast. They give it up on the open, down six tenths percent. Let's see how some of the other airlines are trading. Delta Airlines right now. Come on, keep up. D-A-L, Delta Airlines down uh, similar six tenths percent right now. Domestically, Southwest, they were out with their numbers later. Yeah, all the airlines trading a little bit lower. Cruise lines a little bit lower as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at those cruise ships when we come back. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart here up of EAT, which is Brinker International, better known as Chili's and Maggiano's. Uh, both good restaurants. Maggiano's really enjoy it. They got nice Maggiano's down here. Uh, I think it's in West Shore Plaza. Uh, nice big Italian meals in there. But guess what? Higher costs eating away at their profits. So the way they put it is that uh, profit margins have been dented by higher labor and commodity costs. The parent of Chili's and other restaurant chains said the surge in COVID Delta variant exacerbated those issues. They were down as much as 13.7%. They're down 9%. You see the drop off. Now at the current prices, this is a $2 billion company. But man, it's a lot when you talk about, uh, I just pulled it up on the Analyze tab. Now, as they say here, they operate own franchise Chili's, Maggiano's, restaurant brands, as well as certain virtual brands, including Just Wings, operating those kitchens uh, for virtual delivery. And they have about 45 million shares outstanding. Uh, nothing to scoff at in terms of yesterday. They were, what, a $2.2 billion company, $2.25 billion company. Today, they're a $2 billion company earnings wages eating into that now i get we we get chipotle after the bell tonight as well i wonder if this is weighing down on those earnings down seven tenths percent right now for chipotle they are out with their numbers yes they are tomorrow now chipotle's got a 72 dollar move priced in that's some premium for you if you want to sell some options but boy you might have to face some risk if you're selling some premium uh 72 dollar move 1800 dollar stock you take a look at this thing and it's been quite a run there's your three-year weekly my goodness right you were down to 400 bucks during the lows of covid you're at 1827 you see the run up that they had Yes, that's earnings are not out yet. You see the run up they had their last earnings. They beat in a big way. You came into that number at about 1550. You spiked up to 1958 back in the September uh, price of their numbers and you've pulled back a bit. They're going to have some lofty expectations as well. And it'd be interesting to see how they play out now. Really interesting when you look at how big of a company we're talking about now. We're talking about a company, $51 billion market cap for Chipotle Mexican Grill. They'll have some lofty expectations out tomorrow when you're seeing in the restaurant business, Chili's, Maggiano's, profits being dented in a big way when you talk about supply chain restraints, uh, increasing costs for inputs, and increasing wages. Uh, but Brinker, international, otherwise known as Chili's or Maggiano's, down big. Now, WD-40 also down big. 11% in the pre-market, lower than expected profit and revenue for its latest quarter. Said the pandemic had created abnormal swings in the company's sales results. Interestingly enough, I think I bought some WD-40 within the last three months. I definitely bought it within the last six months. Um, WDFC is their symbol. And boy, this thing's really pulled back from 333 earlier in the year. Today, you're down another 6%. Looks like we're on our way right back to 200 bucks, uh, which was kind of an area that we started things at in October of last year, where you really accelerated with the market from COVID. You trade from 200 to 333. 
and we're basically going to complete that full cup uh, formation at about 200 bucks for WD-40. All right, I said we're going to jump back to some of the cruise ships. Carnival, now that's a, quite a chart, a three-year weekly. Seems like everything, this every time that these cruise ships try and find a little bit of a bid, that was a pretty well-defined channel line. Thinking of nibbling there, I did not, and uh, not so fast, as you got an extension below that level. Remarkable that on September 27th, you were trading at 27 39 you give up almost 20 percent just like that as the market gets a little bit ahead of itself these travel stocks are just remarkable nclh norwegian now norwegian a little bit of a different story here you take the lows of norwegian of seven bucks right you can see the channel lines i here have here this is a three-year weekly you fall out of bed from 60 bucks down to seven we've chopped around on the upper boundary line a couple times and look at how we're just skipping across the bottom of that line there norwegian uh trading at 25.39 down a percent today as well carnival's down you have the airlines trading a little bit lower today united yep holding on to those lows as well let's jump to the cannabis stocks real quick look at that giving it up these stocks just cannot find a bid. That's a weekly. Let's put it on a daily. Yesterday was quite an acceleration. I mean, that, as you can see, quite a green bar. But every time we've gotten them, folks, and listen, I have been wanting to get into these cannabis equities because I think the potential eventually when they do turn should be dramatic in terms of ratcheting it up. I mean, you look at this company right now. Fundamentally, are they not even going to have it? I think it's just slow loading in terms of the market capitalization. Excuse me, there's small market capitalizations for an industry that could explode. I'm not sure why it's coming up. But nonetheless, you give it up today. Yesterday, you were up big. I think it's like 7% or something. Today, you're down 3.2% on the cannabis stocks. Let's see how Tilray is trading as well. Yeah, they're all trading kind of crazy altogether. You had Tilray up big yesterday, uh, giving up 4% of some of those gains yesterday. There's some decent volume. Look at the volume in Tilray yesterday. 68 million. Back that out. Quite a volume spike on these. I mean, you, you see the spikes around earnings. You see the volatility we had in the run-up in June. Uh, but, man, quite a volatility day yesterday, and the market just gives it up again today. Let's see how Bitcoin's trading right now. There's an all-time high for you. Uh-oh. 666. Watch out, folks. 66,600. Is that going to be the all-time high ever on Bitcoin? I kid, but watch out. Round numbers. Our man Basil Chapman coming up next. 66,600. It would make sense that you got to make an all-time high as the futures go public, right? Uh, excuse me, as the ETF starts trading is probably the better way to put it. Uh, there's the Bitcoin ETF from ProShares. BITO up 2.3%. Uh, pretty amusing. You get 66,600 as the all-time high for Bitcoin. We'll see if it can sustain in terms of where we go from there. But nonetheless, you got an all-time high for Bitcoin today. And on the market's climbing to that level too. You're talking about an S&P right now within 30 points of all-time highs. You're talking about a NASDAQ 100 right now within 300 points of all-time highs. And you're talking about a Dow within about 150 points from all-time highs. Russell just continues to be in that consolidation. Uh, I would be careful when you get up to that area of about 2350 in the Russell. You're 80 points from that price level. But you get up to there, we faced resistance constantly for the better part of really eight months or so uh, on that upper portion. You break above it, and man, maybe then that's the, the acceleration of your next leg up in the Russell. But we have not traded above the many times we've climbed up to those levels. All right, jumping back to what else I got queued up here in terms of talking about. Um, where are we going to go? Let's go to U.S. listed Chinese stocks. Yeah, don't be fooled by this one, folks. Uh, if there ever was a dead cat bounce, this may be it. U.S. listed Chinese stocks on track for the best month in a year. The way Kevin talked about Bitcoin is the way I look at Chinese stocks. You know, it's volatile, but how do you put a value on it when you're dealing with companies that are at the whim of a Chinese dictator? And it's just that simple, folks. You know, some people, if you're willing to take that volatility and take that variable of risk that you try and quantify, because that's what you're doing. When you're trading, folks, you're, you're trying to quantify different variables that have different levels of risk within the trade or investment that you're making. In China, you just have an extra variable. And if you can quantify that risk better than other investors, then you can probably get a leg up on them. And that's where you get some returns. Uh, you're up 12% in October, putting it on track for the best month since June of 2022. But it's been hammered by China and still down 26% for the current year, folks. Be careful on that one. Now, Alibaba uh, up 7% after Jack Ma just appears in public to give you some context of where the bar currently is. That's a pretty low bar 
for a public company to shoot up 7% because their CEO is allowed to appear in public. Keep that in mind as you think about investing at the whims of that company. Uh, but Alibaba, jumping over. They give it up a little bit. I guess maybe that was yesterday's action tying into today. Yeah, we're basically flat on Alibaba today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 10 points right now. NASDAQ up 6, Dow up 93. Russell barely in the red by one point right now. You got Bitcoin shares, I was going to say. Bitcoin uh, futures trading right near all-time highs. We might get another all-time high print within 35. There it is, 66,615 record highs on Bitcoin as we speak. Crude right now trading at 81.58. I'm going to finish it up with an article uh, out here just talking pretty generic stuff here in terms of uh, saying panic ordering by retailers is making supply chain crisis even worse. Folks, if you're worried about shopping out there this holiday season, go out there and get it done early. Save yourself some of the stress because I imagine that there's going to be many supply chain issues with just simple holiday shopping items, not even talking about getting into staples like water, toilet paper, paper towels, okay? <laughs> If you have the ability and storage to stock up on those, I'd suggest it as well. Now, the bummer of this is, is that this basically says what I'm talking about. If you think that a run is coming, you're going to order more pro products or input items than you might need to avoid the rush, which is going to perpetuate the supply chain crisis even further. Yes, that's true. 
But guess what? I'm not going to be the one caught last, man, without Christmas presents uh, and water. If you got an ability and water, then you're not going to run out of those inputs, folks. But just in general, like we're out of hurricane season in Florida, thankfully. But, you know, it kind of taught me, you know, there's always a rush on water in Florida when realistically you only need a couple cases, a few cases to get over. You know, the worst, you have a water shortage usually for a few days, maybe something like that. There's always a rush on the grocery stores. Just go out and buy a few of those items. And it stinks that it might make things worse. But you should have those. You should. That's the bottom line, you know, and, and it's not really making it worse. That's the bottom line. And Christmas shopping, just get it done. Maybe you get it done on Black Friday and all of it's done. Do not wait to the end of the season. I like waiting to the end of the season. My dad sometimes waits to the end of the season. Not this year, folks, because it's going to happen, man. Uh, toys are going to get bought out. They're not going to be replenished as they normally would. Cargo ships, crates are not going to show up as they normally would. Probably some of the hottest items. It's going to go pretty quickly and not sure if they'll get refilled as normally is the case. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And if you didn't check it out last night, folks, the archive is going to be up there for subscribers later today. It's still up on the front page of TFNN. Sign up for Basil's opening call. You'll gain access to that outstanding webinar he did last night. 95 minutes, I think he was in there with subscribers. Available to opening call subscribers later today. Thanks, folks. Have a great Wednesday. Stay tuned. Live programming all day.